right, my friends, welcome back. Uh, the next few episodes, uh, Mike and I will be uh, discussing the Psalms and our civic responsibilities. And I have the subtitle, Perennial Advice from the Wisdom Literature. Mm -hmm. And um, usually I give um, practical at the end of our conversation, but I'll give you a, like a little snippet here at the beginning before we get in uh, more into more of the discourse. Um, Senator uh, Bob Hall, one of the few statesmen I think is here in Texas, um, put forth a bill to um, Texas, Michael, we have views all over the world. I kept one screenshot of, um, of, where is it, of some of our views. One day we had views from Ireland, Spain, oh, wow. India. I usually am um, being looked at from China and North <laughs> Korea, oh, wow. sometimes uh, from Peru and South America as well. So That's so cool. It is very cool. God is so good to give us these means. Yeah. So I'm talking about Texas and uh, you, my friends, might think, oh, well, you know, that's colloquial. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you to consider perhaps it's not as colloquial as you might think that what happens in the United States and certainly Texas is a big highway on what goes on in this country. If it's not at a theater near you, it could very well be. Mm -hmm. So back to Senator Hall. Um, he put forth some really solid proposals to make um, voting more um, transparent, uh, you know, make sure that the voter is voting for who or he or she cares to and not uh, having it flipped or partially counted mm -hmm. for however someone else might care to do that. So he had some really good efforts. But I want to, he himself in his own video, so he has a video, uh, so a YouTube video, and it's link, it'll be linked here. At the 17-minute mark, he said something very, uh, I think, interesting. First time I've heard a politician say this out loud in public, though they talk about it in private often, is that in a court of law, they would not be able to prove that they had garnered their seat um, to the you know to the standard that wouldn't be needed in court law. They can't prove that they really have the seat that they have. Hmm. And moreover, he says that even though good processes, good laws are needed, he himself will put forward that they are not sufficient. Hmm. Laws in and of themselves aren't sufficient because if you got cheaters, they're going to cheat. If you've got yeah. steals, they're going to steal. Um, if you have a prosecution that's broken and DAs and the police who's under the mayor and the mayor got in because he cheated, you, you start to see you can have the best laws in the world, but you're not going to have um, good, uh, good civics. Mm. And therein is our segue into sacred scripture. Because that really is the foundation from our perspective on formation of conscience, for a definition of morality, yeah. um, a viewpoint of what is right and wrong, of which law is built on. And in the United States of America, that is absolutely what our founding fathers thought about sacred scripture. Mm -hmm. We can, Were they flawed men? Yes. Did they... Maybe not always get all of the theology the way we might think so. Sure. But um, that does not take away from the solid fact that sacred scripture is the, um, it's the bedrock. Yeah. It's the bedrock for foundation. Us. It's our foundation. So that's why we're going to take some time, Mike and I, to go through Psalms and scripture and our approach to it and that sort of thing. Because if we ourselves aren't formed, right, then we have a harder time to act in a court way, or we also have a harder time to judge 
the other so we were just talking politics but it could be um any it, anything. It, it is anything and everything yeah how how do you judge right how do you judge so that's the opening salvo micah i love it all it's right exciting i read through all the notes and i'm so excited to talk about it because i just think there's so much value in scripture alone in that same way of foundation and bedrock to where it just helps make so much sense out of life. You know, it gives such a beautiful explanation for our existence even and that, the story of it. So that's right. That's right. Um, so let's take a little overview of sacred scripture in general, because um, I'm kind of reminded again, we, you know, we, we have a particular audience. Anyone who comes to an, uh, a, a site that is Latin, you know, there, there has been a little bit of effort to figure out I'm what sure. does Latin mean and <laughs> come in, come into it. But um, I think I think just a basic general uh, overview of sacred scripture, and then we'll narrow down to Psalms because then that way, what we have here, you can start to apply. You know, in um, well, let me get it. Got to wave the buck. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. any anywhere. So, so yeah. similar concepts regardless of the book. Um, the first overriding idea is that it's the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, who is truly the author. He um. And as such, since he is God, he's, um, you know, one of the attributes of God is truth. And therefore, there can be no lie. There can be no error, um, any darkness, any such thing. What the problem comes in is that the text isn't often read in context mm -hmm. without a sensitivity to the type of writing it is. Right. So that goes into the next point. It, I think of scripture, sacred scripture, as a library. It's a collection of books with different types of genre, such as history or apocalyptic or wisdom literature, to name a few. Yeah. But, so let's take a current example of apocalyptic, such as Revelations or Daniel or some parts mm -hmm. of Ezekiel, right? What would happen if you speak truth to power. If Daniel or John wanted to come right out and say what they happen to think about the temple structure or, um, you know, the, the Roman emperor, what would happen to them? They'd be killed. They absolutely would. <laughs> yeah. Do we see evidence of that sort of thing today? Mm. I think so, yeah. Well, just thinking about the persecution of the church that still goes on today, you know, that is so hidden from the main media and never reported on, it seems. That's correct. That's correct. And I know for my own channel, Pete, the astute follower or subscriber notices I'm sometimes on YouTube and I'm sometimes not. And mm -hmm. sometimes my views are up and sometimes they're down. And, um, you know, apocalyptic literature has to use coded language if they're trying to speak truth to the man, as, it, mm. as the phrase goes. Yeah. You run into the same age old problem. So that's just a little insight to, to some of that. Um, so then staying on this library. So sacred scripture has a library. Um, so then you can go into a library and you can go in as a visitor. You don't have a card, but you can certainly look around and browse and observe. Or you can be that frequent flyer who's in there. You have your card. It's up to date. Mm -hmm. And maybe in a, in, a, in, a, in a very broad sense, we could call those the baptized and the unbaptized. Hmm. The unbaptized is in there, you know, anybody can pick this up and they can start reading it and they're going to get, you know, they'll get some little gems. Yeah. But if you have someone who's baptized, 
and who has a deep and abiding relationship with the Holy Spirit. And they are engaged with the Father's business. Mm. They're going to see it different, right? Yeah. They're going to approach it different. It comes more alive. It does. It does. And the more they're, it's like being in the library. And, you know, the fifth floor has whatever. And the main floor has whatever. And you just go, because you're the, you know, the one always in the library. You could just go, oh, I want, you know, I need this information. Or I I want this inspiration or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Or that window with that chair and the light comes through it. Yeah. Really does the Holy Spirit, right? Mm. That's the Holy Spirit. It's like building in a, you become more acquainted with it the more time you spend there. That's exactly right. Yeah. And look, it is it is time for the next episode. Uh-huh. <laughs> it goes so fast. It does. It does. All right, my friends, till the next time. Feed Ace and Rachio.